stand for worship. There is the truth older than the ages. There is a promise of things of yet to come. There is one born for our salvation. that bind us He is Jesus Jesus Who walks on the waters Who speaks to the sea Who stands in the fire beside me He roars like a lion He bled as a lamb He carries call in times of trouble there is a song that comforts in the night there is a voice that calms the storm that rages he is jesus jesus who walks on the waters who speaks to the sea who stays Let's go to him in prayer. Father, I'm so gracious that you love me enough, 
Lord, that you would come into my life when I make my confession. Thank you, Lord. There's no one like you. Lord, we welcome you into this worship time. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I praise you, praise your name, and I give you honor, for you're the healing Jesus. You're the saving Jesus. You're the delivering Jesus. There's no other name whereby we can be saved but by the name of Jesus. And I bless you, and I praise your name. Let's worship him together, join together, and bless his name.
worship him.
Aren't you thankful he is Jesus Messiah this morning? Amen. Amen. Turn to page number 10 with us this morning. Page number 10 talks about that meeting in the air. I'm looking forward to that grand meeting in the air. Amen. Amen. Let's sing it. Page number 10.
doubters will be missing altogether. All the skeptics will be absent on that day. There will never be a service. And the ancients will be busy far away. There the saints will have this seal upon their forehead. The dressed in pain and not a ransom one can wear. All who have the wedding garment will be present at that meeting in the end. Oh, there is going to be. This one. Many things will there be missing in that meeting. For the mourners' beach will have no place at all. There will never be a sermon preached to sinners. For the sinner has refused to heed the call. There will be no mourning over wayward loved ones. There will be no lonely nights of pleading prayer. All our burdens and our anguish will be lifted at that meeting in the air. family. What a joy it is to worship with you today. Let me take just a moment and welcome our guest today. If you are a first-time guest, a returning guest, or maybe someone who hasn't been with us in several weeks, we want to say thank you for worshiping with us today. We would be honored if you would take just a moment and complete the connection card that you will find right in front of you in the seat pocket. That connection card will allow us to connect
connect with you throughout this week and just let you know how, how excited we were that you were with us in the house of the Lord today. To all of our guests, please make sure you stop by the Welcome Center on your way out and pick up your free gift. I just believe that this service is going to be a wonderful opportunity for you to connect not only with the local congregation, but also with the Spirit of the Lord. Let's worship together. We are so excited for our new walk in Friday, August 2nd, from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. We're going to have lots of fun, food, games, and a few surprises. You don't want to miss it. Invite your friends and come and hang out with us. If you're happy and you know it, say amen. If you're awake and you know it, say amen. Some of our young people feel like they're dragging this morning. Amen. What a wonderful week at youth camp we had. Thank you for everybody who helped us get there. And there were 35 uh, from our church that were represented at youth camp this week. And we're going to give them an opportunity tonight uh, for those that uh, will and are participating to share from their heart. Maybe something God done for them or a testimony of how camp impacted their life. And if you were able to watch any of the services with us uh, via Facebook Live, or I think they're on YouTube as well. Uh, we had a wonderful time in the Lord this week. And uh, uh, two services of the five night services, we didn't even get to preach them. And uh, just the Spirit of God began to move one night, the second night, uh, Thursday night. Uh, during the choir singing, and Wednesday night during the opening song. They didn't get past the opening hymnal. Wednesday night, and those kids just flooded those altars and spent hours in the presence of the Lord, and it was a wonderful week, and I do want to say thank you to everybody who helped us get there, and uh, they'll be sharing more about that tonight in the evening service. I tried to do a quick count this morning, and I think I'm missing a few of them. There's about four or five I can't put my eyes on this morning, and so I'm wondering if they got caught up in the word of the Lord this morning. And I don't mean the Bible, I mean their bed, amen. I wonder if they overslept, didn't get here in time. So we'll have to find them this afternoon, make sure that they are on this side of the world, amen. Um, you say, well, it's just youth camp, it, it, you know, they have nice dorms and they should be fine. Well, they are, but they don't go to bed until 2 or 2.30 in the morning and they have to be back up, breakfast out of the way and ready for church at 9 o'clock. It begins to wear on them after a while. It begins to wear on those that go to bed at a decent hour and a decent hour at youth camp is midnight amen and uh, that's a decent hour if you get to bed by midnight you're doing good but what a wonderful week we've had uh, the largest camp possibly ever we know the largest camp in many many years 119 campers 30 kids in kids camp and uh, that's just overwhelming so what a wonderful week it has been and I know a few of you snuck up there and was with us in service a night or two and we're delighted that you were able to do that if I had my way and I thought about this and I don't know what next year is going to hold I thought man if I could work it out I'd rent a big old bus fill that big old bus up on Friday night get everybody to go to Friday night PYFC U camp service and bring you back home Friday night I may have to work on that I got a year to figure it out amen I may work on that and let you come up and experience camp with us one night what a wonderful wonderful week we've had and I do appreciate everything that happened here to keep everything moving and uh, what a wonderful time we had there as we were in the presence of the Lord uh, just it seemed like just from the get-go the spirit of the Lord was with us and uh, if you know sister Christian sister Christian is McKaylin's mom some of you will recognize she's visited with us in church here numerous times uh, she was the one back in the month of March that the tree fell on her car and uh, they didn't know what the outcome was going to be life flooded her to Gainesville Hospital we shared some of that with you uh, they have uh, they asked her to give her testimony this week in camp and she did that it's supposed to be Wednesday night but they didn't get past the opening song so they moved it to Thursday night and she did get a chance to do that on Thursday night and they've got that up on Facebook and on YouTube and so if you want to go out and try to find that if you need help with that let us know uh, but I believe you would be impacted just to watch that part of one of those services on just what the Lord has done in her life it is a miracle from heaven that she is even with us today so continue to pray for her and we'll share more about camp tonight and uh, hope that you'll be with us as we uh, give honor to the Lord for all he's done for us going to ask the ushers if they would to get ready to wait upon you this morning while you're getting your tithes and your offerings ready let me remind you tonight at 5 30 will be prayer meeting we'll meet back in the prayer rooms at 5 30 uh, so men and women both if you'll join us at 5 30 in the prayer rooms tonight also uh, do want to remind our church family our home family 
uh, that uh, we are, are in the process of removing our pews and putting in chairs uh, in our sanctuary, and we have found a home for our church pews to go be relocated. Um, they're actually going to go to the Lake Butler Church of God up in Lake Butler, Florida. And so uh, they were just eager to hop on that earlier this week. We had four or five inquiries. Uh, they were the first one, and they asked for a day or two to work with their church, and they talked to their church, and their church is interested in them. So if all goes as planned, they will pick them up on Saturday, this coming Saturday. Um, so we'll have service on these pews, obviously, today. We will have service on them Wednesday night. And then Thursday morning, if all goes as planned, we will pull them up and uh, get ready for transport, and they will be here Saturday morning to pick them up. So you'll have to get here early next Sunday to find your new favorite chair and your new favorite spot. And uh, so we're going to be picking those chairs up tomorrow. And uh, just a reminder, if you missed it in our conversations, uh, we're only bringing in enough chairs to fill the sanctuary floor. Um, we're borrowing or we're getting those, if you will, not totally borrowing them, but using them from another church here in the uh, West Orange area. And that will be until our chairs, our new chairs arrive. When our new chairs arrive, we'll replace the ones we're uh, using and all the chairs on the platform will all be replaced to all match. And so it's going to be an exciting time for us. And so I just pray that you'll get in here with us and let's continue to move forward. If you haven't paid for your chairs, some of you said, um, I'm going to buy a chair or two or three or four. You can go ahead and do that at any service. Just drop it in the offering plate, market chairs. Uh, details about that are in your bulletin, how much they are, things of that nature. And uh, we'll do our very best to keep uh, keep you updated over the coming weeks as we see what this sanctuary will look like. It'll be different for us. It'll look different for us, but I'm looking forward to moving forward with the Lord and seeing what he has for us. The ushers will serve you from the rear of the building. When they get to the altar areas, we'll ask for the Lord's blessings. God bless you as you give to the Lord this morning. Let us pray this morning. Father, we thank you for the privilege we've had to be in your house this day. Thank you for every gift that's been given today, every tithe, every offering, every love gift. God, we just pray that you'll bless it for the intended use this morning. Just take it and multiply it. God, that ministry will continue to happen here from Okoe Church of God. Lord, as we just try to encourage folks and lead folks to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, bless every family, God, that's represented and have given this morning. Meet their needs in their home abundantly, Lord, and we'll forever give you praise and honor and glory. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody said amen. And amen. Thank you again for your giving to the Lord. Just before Titus comes and sings this morning, I do want to just uh, join in with the video announcements and say welcome to our guest. If you're visiting with us, delighted to have you with us. Make sure you stop by and grab your free gift on the way out. Let's worship with Titus as he sings before I preach this morning.
was the best thing I ever, ever done. In his arms I feel protected. In his arms never disconnected. In his arms I feel protected.
was the best thing I ever, ever done. Ooh, falling in love with Jesus. Falling in love with Jesus. Falling in love with Jesus was the best. Stay with me. Let's we'll sing it before I leave my text this morning. With Jesus. Hallelujah. Say amen this morning. Amen. If you will remain standing for the reading of the word of the Lord this morning. Hebrews chapter number 12. The last time they gave me a little more in the house to help compensate for my camp voice. Hebrews chapter number 12. Thank you. Verse number 14. Hebrews 12 and verse number 14. says, follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. Would you stretch your hand this way and ask for God's anointing to be in the remainder of this service. Father, we love you this morning. Thank you for the privilege we've had to be in your house on the Lord's day. Thank you, Lord, for the privilege we've had together with brothers and sisters of like faith. Lord, to lift up the name of your Son and our Savior. Lord, every song, Lord, everything we've done today has been done to give honor and praise and glory unto your Son. And Lord, I pray as we come to the preach word of the Lord, God, that you'll anoint me. Give me that anointing that makes preaching effective, God. Uh, open our hearts and our minds and our ears, Lord, uh, that we can hear from heaven today. Let us have a desire in our heart to pursue after holiness. Let us have a desire in our heart, God, to pursue after the ways of Christ. Help us in this place today. Let us fall in love with you all over again. Let us fall in love with you all over again. Lord, and we'll forever give you the praise and the honor and the glory for it. In the name of Jesus, we pray today. And everybody said amen. And amen. You may be seated in the house of the Lord this morning. Follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall shall see the Lord. I began last Sunday morning to unfold this text to us and got through a little bit of it. And as I've been in youth camp this week, I've just been reminded of the importance that we spend time with the Lord. I've been reminded of the importance of pushing away the things of the world and the devices of the world and the distractions of the world and put our mind in a focus and then an attention to spend time with the Lord and maybe more than we ever have before. I remember last Sunday morning as I began to preach on this thought that the 
that, that, that the Spirit of the Lord just moved in my heart and moved in this place, and we begin to talk about uh, the busyness of life and the busyness of the days and, and the busyness of our responsibilities. And, and if we're not careful, we'll be so busy, sometimes busy doing things for the Lord um, that we will, we, will, we will forget um, or we will run out of time uh, or the enemy will distract you in a way um, that you won't get to spend that quality time um, with the Lord. We began last week looking at that the holiness of God is a, it, it can be attributed to being Christ-like. And I share with you scriptures, be holy for I am holy. I share with you, uh, he that saith he abide in him and he ought himself also to do walk even as he walked. I begin to unfold the importance of being holy in every step and everything that we do. Uh, and, and, and while I understand when we get saved and we are saved and we're ready to go to heaven at that point, there is some growing, there is some there is some maturing that needs to happen. Uh, there, there is some life that needs to occur. There is a process that needs to go through in our life and we add to our experience uh, those things that I spoke about to you last week. And, and I began uh, unfolding this last week with number one that says it takes time for you and I to be holy. We can't just go pop it in the microwave, if you will, and put on a coat of holiness or a, or, or a dress of holiness and, or a hat of holiness. No, uh, if we're going to be holy, it's going to be because uh, we have spent time with the one who is holy. Uh, if we're going to be holy, it's because uh, we have pushed away some things in our life uh, and we have come into the presence uh, of a holy Holy God, we have learned from Him. Uh, we have sought His presence. Uh, we have desired to be with Him, uh, for He is holy, and so should we be holy. Begin to unfold that with you last week, and I shared a couple of thoughts with you that the multiplicity of our duties, our business, our family, and the demands of these times have stolen many of our Christian graces. If you are not careful, just the busyness of life will prevent you from spending quality time with the Lord. The devil is a master of distraction, and he manufactures all sorts of distractions to keep us from drawing closer to the Lord. How do we do that, Pastor? You spend time at the foot of Calvary you'll draw closer to Jesus. Amen. You spend time at the foot of the cross and you'll spend and you'll find yourself drawing closer to Jesus. And if we're not careful, we will find things in our life that will distract us from spending time with the Lord. I'm reminded of what we learned from the, the, the disciples in Christ in the book of Matthew when Jesus asked them, could you not watch with me one hour? Could you not watch with me one hour? Could you not spend one hour with me? I don't want you to vote this morning, but how many of you have spent one hour with the Lord this week? And we should spend more than that. Amen. I say, God, give us a desire that every day we will spend time with the Lord. Every day and that we will find that private time. Every day and that we will spend time with the Lord so we can learn from Him. How long has it been since you spent one hour at the, with the Lord? How long has it been since you've been at His feet and just bathed yourself in His glory? It takes time time to be holy. It takes time in the presence of the Lord. Number two, last week, last Sunday night, I began to unfold this. And holy people are people of prayer. Holy people are people of prayer. What do I mean by that? That means we're not going to pray just when we come to the dinner table or come to church. But we're going to be people of prayer. That prayer is part of who we are. Last Sunday night, I, I took a very unique approach to this uh, this uh, this uh, item or or this thought, and and we strategically spent time praying for three or four different areas in our world, and and then I led us to an altar of prayer. Why? Because it's important that we understand that we must be people of prayer. First Peter four and seven says that, but in the end of all things is at hand. Be you therefore sober and watch unto prayer. Watch unto prayer. I believe today we get so busy doing other things uh, that we will do e even things that are good, even things uh, that are important. But if we're not careful, we will not be the people of prayer that God has called us to be. And I say, God, would you convict our hearts uh, and would you one more time allow us uh, to be people of prayer? See, David established uh, the proper habits of devotions in his life. Uh, he was one that set aside 
time for prayers. Let us have time for praise. Let us have time to be in the presence of the Lord. And I say, Lord, I know what we do is important, but it never should be more important than spending that quality time with the Lord. It never should be more important than pushing away everything else and finding that private time in the Holy of Holies. Number three this morning. Waiting on the Lord gives us strength for holiness. How many of you have ever had to wait on the Lord for something? I have. I mean, just have to wait on the Lord. And if we're not careful in those times, either we will draw closer to the Lord or we will draw further apart from the Lord. Because waiting is not very easy for most of us to do. It is the waiting before the Lord that gives us strength for His holiness. Second Samuel 7 and 18, the word of the Lord says, Then went King David in and sat before the Lord. Then went King David in and sat before the Lord. How many of you have, have literally just taken time to sit in the presence of the Lord and wait on Jesus? Well, Pastor, I have lots to do. That's part of our problem sometimes. Pastor, I have uh, responsibilities with family and jobs and careers and schooling. I understand the importance of all of that, but I've been convicted as I've been studying and trying to find the mind of God and, Lord, talking to my heart. I said, Lord, sometimes uh, we just need to be willing to sit right in your presence uh, and just wait till you show up. What happens when we spend time in his presence? Most of, most, of the rush through, most, of, most of us rush through the day without giving time for communion or devotion to the Lord. We are like the parents of Jesus. This convicted my heart. Listen to this. You remember the parents of Jesus? They went a day's journey supposing that Jesus was with them in the crowd only to find out at the end of the day that he was missing. They went all day just assuming that Jesus was there. I wonder how many of us have went all day just assuming that Jesus was with us. Went all day assuming he was in the crowd in the company of those that were with them only to find out at the end of the day that Jesus wasn't there. The parents of Christ left him for one day, but it took them three days to find him. Think about it. They left him for one day, but it took them three days to find him. This is a lesson for all of us to learn that when we leave Christ out of our lives and we fail to contact him for just one day, it takes time to regain that spiritual strength that we lost when we did not seek his face. Let me illustrate it this way to you. How many of you have failed in your prayer life? Don't vote. You've missed a day or two or three, and you find yourself at the end of that span of time. It seems that you have spiritually been drained or backed up or whatever the word may be, and it just seems it takes you a couple extra days or prayers or, or weeks to get back to it. This is a prime example of that. Jesus' parents was without him one day, but it took them three days to find him. And when we don't spend that time with the Lord each and every day, it does have an effect on our spiritual life. It does have an effect on who we are. It does have an effect on those that are around us because they know that we haven't been with the Lord. And they can see that, especially if you're trying to win them for the Lord and trying to be an influence to them. You've got to make sure that we spend time with the Lord, that we take time to be in His presence. If we're going to be holy people, we must be willing to wait on the Lord. I don't like to wait. I don't. I mean, when they're too slow at the drive through I don't like to wait. I'm going to tell them myself. I went home yesterday after youth camp and stayed here for a little bit, did a few things, went home, did a few more things, and I came back. Wendy said, I'll, I'll let you know when supper is ready. I said, it would be nice if you would give me 30 minutes of a heads up because I just can't get up and leave. I just, I got to close things up and, I said, give me 30 minutes heads up before you're ready, and I'll try to be home because she does not like it when supper is ready, and I'm not, you know, I just take forever to get home. I don't understand that. I'm working for Jesus. But if you have a wife, you understand. When they cook, they want you to get home quick to eat. 
We don't eat as a family every night through the week with our schedules, so we try to take care of that on the weekends the best we can. And so she texted me and said, supper is ready. And I went, well, where's my 30 minutes? She says, well, just finish up and get home as soon as you can. She got busy and forgot to send me the text. And so I finish up and finish. I close a few things up, wrap a few things up, and I get home. And, and uh, I don't care if you know what we had. We had burritos last night. Some of you... Uh, had drive throughs and some of you did pizza because y'all have been going all week and didn't want to cook. I know, but Wendy went home and cooked last night, and uh, we had burritos and all whatever that means, and so she had Titus's fixed and Mariah's fixed and Cheris fixed, and she fixed mine. I walked in. They were ready to eat. I texted them and told them I was leaving. They got everything ready, and I walked in, sat right down to dinner, and, uh, and she's still at the stove doing something. I knew what she was doing. She was fixing her plate, and, and so I said, well, are we ready to eat yet? or not she turned around and said will you wait just a moment I'm fixing my food I don't like to wait but that's the same way it is in our prayer life sometimes we want to rush into the presence of the Lord and tell him all the things that are wrong in our life and everything that we need from him and we want him to answer right then and we want to rush back out of there never spending quality time with the Lord now what was ironic about last night's dinner is we, we waited, we prayed and ate, and everybody got up from that table but me. I was the last one there. And it wasn't because I was eating a whole lot. I guess I was just eating slow last night. Something about just being with them. But I, I began to think about that. I said, look, you know, she, she's been waiting, she's been waiting, she's been waiting, trying to plan around my schedule. I get home, sit in that chair, and before I even realized it, I said, well, are we going to eat or are we not? She's like, wait a minute, let me fix mine. Wait a minute. That's how we are in our Christian walk. If we're not careful, we'll be so big of a hurry that we won't even wait on the Lord. Can I remind you we're not all that spiritual if we don't have Jesus with us? Can I remind you we're really no match for the enemy if we're not, if we're not enveloped and wrapped in the presence and the power of the Lord? Can I remind you that what you face in the world, it, it, it can and it will bring destruction to your life unless you have been equipped with the presence of the Lord to fight the battle that God's put before us? And I say, God, if we understand all of that, then why would we not want to spend time in the presence of the Lord? You ever been rushed through your morning and didn't get to spend a little time meditating on the Lord and it seems like everything goes wrong that day? But then some mornings when you get up and you, and you strategically spend time with the Lord and in His presence, it just seems like everything flows a little bit better. Let, let me give you some instructions about waiting upon the Lord. Isaiah 30 and 7, their strength is to sit still. Their strength is... According to Isaiah, Old Testament is to sit still. It would do some of us good to learn how to sit still in the presence of the Lord. And since I'm preaching, I'll say this. It would do some of us good to learn how to sit still in church and not go in and out 15 times. Let me continue on. Isaiah 40 and 31. But, those, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Oh, we love that verse. I hear some of you quoted at times. We love it. But do you understand what it's saying? Those that wait upon the Lord. Waiting for us is difficult at times. Let me share with you some things that, that I believe. Let me give you another verse. Psalms 27 and 14. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thy heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. If we're going to be holy people, we must learn how to meditate upon the Lord. Uh, that meditation, that time in His presence, uh, that time waiting on Him uh, causes the fire of holiness to burn uh, in our heart. And the psalmist said in Psalms 39, uh, My heart was hot within me while I was meditating. and The fire burned. I said, Lord, would you help us this morning to have a desire to sit in the presence of the Lord? Would you help us this morning to have a desire to shut everything else out that's around us? Uh, 
something that's, that's causing for our time and that's calling for our attention and would you let us be people that have a desire just to sit in the presence of a holy God and say Lord whatever you have for me today I'm here to, to, to receive whatever you have for me today I'm, I, I'm here to hear whatever you have for me today God I'm willing to wait upon the Lord Wait, I say, on the Lord. There's been times in my life, I'll come over to the sanctuary. I don't believe you have to be in the sanctuary to pray. But there's something special about coming to this place. And I'll come and I'll sit either on the platform or lay on that floor, sit here in the floor, and just meditate on the presence of God. The Lord knows my heart. He's heard my request, Ryan. He knows what I have need of. I've already shared that with him. There's sometimes I just come and bask in his presence. There's sometimes I just come and say, Lord, I, I, I don't know what else to do. I, I, I don't know how to help that family. I, 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 I don't understand all they're going through. I, I, I don't know how to be a pastor to them. And Maybe it's with my own kids or my own family. I don't know, God. I'm not here to bring a list of petitions, God. I'm just here to just to soak up your presence. A few years ago, you preached a series, a couple of Wednesday nights, I believe it was, on seeking the Lord's face and not just his hands. I thought about that recently. And I said, we get so wrapped up with the give me, give me, give me, help me, help me, help me, move on this, that we don't even take time just to seek the face of the Lord, just to, just to have a desire to be in his presence, just to have a desire to say, God, I'm here, and if you want me to sit here, just to sit here, God, as long as I'm in your presence, I know being in your presence is never a wasted amount of time. We seek his presence. If we're going to be holy people, we're going to have to wait on the Lord because that waiting will give us strength to fight the battles. That waiting will give us strength to go after the holiness that God has called us, calls, uh, calling us to go after. There's no place in the, in, in, in the world for a, for a heart that is burning on, on, on fire with the Lord. Uh, that holiness in our heart will burn out the sin. It will purge us of the things of this world. Uh, but it takes time for us to meditate on the, on the Lord. Genesis 24 and 63. And Isaac went out to meditate in the field at the evening evening tide and Isaac went out to meditate uh, one must draw away from the busyness of, of the day and I'll use this word we must tithe our time unto the Lord now a lot of people as soon as you say the word tithe they automatically think of money and while I believe there is a requirement in scripture to tithe of our of our fruits and our money there's also, I believe, a principle we can learn there to give the Lord one-tenth of everything that we have. And if I'm given some time in every day, I need to learn how to tithe or to set apart or to make sacred a portion of that time so that I can spend it with the, the Lord. Now, I'm not sure how it goes in your day, but I find if I don't steal away before the busyness of the day gets started, then I'll lose that whole day. You know what I like about youth camp? So those kids get, man, they get loaded up with prayer and devotion in church. I mean, 9 o'clock in the morning, they've already had breakfast and they're already at church. We do it again at 7.30 and then they do devotions before they go to bed and some of those counselors from what I have heard some of those counselors can talk and talk and talk and talk. But some of those students can do just as good of a job talking too. But you know what it is? It's creating that discipline in them. You know what they were encouraged to come back to home to do? Exactly what they've been doing all week. Create that discipline. Create that time of setting apart a time of your day to meditate on the Lord, to find His presence, to read His Word, to simply sit in His presence and say, Lord, it's me again, and I just want to know that you're here. Can I share with you a struggle that I have in my life? I'm being very transparent. When it gets real quiet, I get real nervous. I don't get quiet at the office. 
I don't like it quiet at my house. I don't like it quiet in church. I, I like to know that there, that everybody's still alive and everything's still moving. And to do that, often I'll just have some kind of background music or something. Almost always there's something going on in my office just so it's not so quiet. Now, it's not usually quiet over in that office. But just in case they ever want to all hush at the same time, I don't like it to be too quiet over there. You know what it's good for us to do as Christians sometimes? We need to learn how to enjoy the quietness of his presence. I need, And I've, I've had to grow through that. That's why I'll come over to this sanctuary, and especially if it's in the evening when the sun's already gone down, and I may just kick on the lights above the, above the pulpit only, leave everything else off, and just sit in his presence. And sometimes I just begin to think about all that he's done for me. And I want to just praise him. And the more I praise him, the more he talks to me. And the more I praise him, the more I want to be in his presence. And the more I'm in his presence, the more I want to be like Jesus. And the more I want to be like Jesus, the, the greater work he does in my life. And when all that begins to work together, it kind of just pulls me away from the busyness of the day. But it takes time. It takes time. And if we don't put the time in to be holy, we're not going to be the holy people that God has called us to be. I don't want to share all the details for tonight. I'm hoping some of these kids will share from their heart, but I can tell you this week some of them have pushed away from the busyness of life, and they've allowed the time of the Lord to be beneficial in their life, and if they will keep up that devotion, it will make better people out of them. Let me move on. The, the holy man meditates upon God's word according to Psalms 1 and, and Psalms chapter 1 verse 2. For his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. Meditate on the law of the Lord. Meditate on the presence of the Lord. Meditate on the word of the Lord, that we will meditate upon it day and night. Can I ask you this morning? Have you spent time with the Lord this week? Can I ask you this morning, have you prayed not only for yourself, but have you prayed for those that you come in contact with? Have you prayed that God will make you more like him? Have you prayed that, God, I will be in your presence and I will have a desire to meditate on your word and meditate on who you are? God, I want to just sit right here and I want to wait on you. Sometimes we're looking for him to show up in the loudness of the day. Sometimes, Ryan, he wants to just simply get us away in his presence so he can talk to us. Here's how I want to close this morning. I want you all to come back and sing Falling in Love with Jesus all over again. Because you know what it would do some of us good to do this morning? Fall in love with Jesus again. I don't mean the busyness of church. I don't mean the busyness of responsibilities and family and duties. All of that's going to always be here as long as we're on this side of heaven. But what about just spending some time in his presence? What about just pushing back all the responsibilities that you have to deal with this week and just say, God, for a few moments, I want to just wait on you. Wait on you. Wait on you. Let me continue on this morning. Just a few moments, those guys going to be coming. Number four this morning, holiness requires communion with the Lord. Communion with the Lord. It is the aim of Satan to keep us so occupied with earthly things that it robs us of our holiness. It robs us of our holiness. The bosom companionship of Peter and John with our Lord Jesus Christ was reflected in their lives. They had spent time with him. They had been around him. And in Acts 14, 13, people said things like this. They took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. Holiness requires communion with the Lord. If I don't talk to Sister Wendy every now and then, she gets really upset with me, and she should. I try to wake up and say good morning. Before I go to bed, I make sure I say good night. Why? Because I don't know what the next moment's going to hold. It's got to be a communion. Some of you that have girlfriends and boyfriends, you communicate all the time. 
One thing good about you camp is there's no cell phones, praise the Lord, for students, for campers. The rest of us are still attached. Gets you out of that. Gets us out of that. Satan's aim is to keep us so occupied with earthly things that it robs us of our holiness. You ever went through a week and at the end of it just feel like you have just, just you're just drained? I mean, there's like, I, I just don't even know. And I heard somebody say this recently. I don't even know if I'm even saved anymore. That's the enemy trying to rob you of the holiness of God that's in your life. He's, he's, so, he's, he's put so many things to distract and to occupy. Jacob took time to be holy. And after an all-night prayer meeting, his holiness was known to all by the chains that had been brought in his life. When you spend time with the Lord, people will know. Let me preach to my kids just for a moment. We're at youth camp. All of you were in the altars this week. We will know if you continue to be in the altars after youth camp. Because the way you respond will reflect where you spend your time. Jacob took time to be holy. The greatest testimony to holiness is not a sermon or a testimony. The greatest testimony of holiness is the way we live our life in the presence of the Lord. We must make time to worship. Because you're going to worship something. And if it's not God you're worshiping, I can assure you, you will worship something else. Because man was created with that, with that understanding. Man was created to worship. And most people have set up idols in their heart and they bow at the shrine of materialism. And that is where they worship. But the Bible tells us in Psalms 29, Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name and worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Just for being God. Just for being God. One cannot worship with a divided mind. Worship requires a singleness of heart, and it takes time to close the world out, to get rid of that distraction, and to focus our attention on the Lord. You ever come to church, even in praise and worship, and you're singing the words, but then you realize you don't even realize what you're singing. We're so programmed with the words, we know what they are, but our mind is somewhere else. That's the way it is with our worship. We have to be intentional about it. We have to commune with the Lord. We have to be fully engaged. And if we're not fully engaged, it will be no more than just reputation, reputation, reputation and tradition. The rush and the bustle of these days does not provide for the kind of worship that God has created and desires from his people. So we must be like the Apostle Paul in Ephesians 5. We must redeem the time because the days are evil. Closing this morning, guys, if you would come on. David's life was a life of continual praise. Everywhere David went, he found something about which to praise and to magnify the Lord over. He shouted with a voice of triumph. He clapped his hand and praised God for all the wondrous works to the children of men. And it should be our attitude that we have a desire in our heart to spend time with the Lord and to give Him praise and to give Him honor and to give Him glory. Let me say this this morning. Don't let Satan rob you of the holiness of God. Don't let Satan rob you what God's wanting to do in your life. Don't fly off the handle when you know better. Don't get wrapped up in stuff that you know better. It's a distraction. It's a distraction to pull you away from the presence of the Lord. It's a distraction wrap you up into something that won't matter when it comes to eternity I know some of you think I got all the time in the world can I tell you I'm not trying to scare you I wouldn't do that but I'm going to tell you right now you're not promised the next day or the next breath and if you call it a scare tactic you can call it what you want I'm not doing that I'm just being real open with you here today gone tomorrow 
And everything I've done is what I'm going to answer for. And if I've not even taken time to spend time in His presence, if I've not even taken time to allow Him to be Lord of my life, if I've not taken time to seek after His holiness, then I would be real concerned that He would allow me into His place. I grew up in this thing. This is all I know. I don't apologize for that. This is all I know. But growing up in it, I've learned some, a few things that I wish I didn't know. I've learned that sometimes people put more value on what we don't do more than what we do do. And I believe there's a whole lot of things we don't do because they're not Christ-like. But I believe there's a whole lot of things we ought to be doing because we love Jesus. And if I can't even find time to spend in His presence, I would question if I really loved Him or not. I grew up old school. I grew up older school than when I'm raising my own kids. We didn't do nothing back then. Some of you remember those days. We didn't go to Pizza Hut. We didn't go skating, ice skating, roller skating, none of it. We didn't go to the movie house. Football games on Friday nights were even questionable. Worldly stuff. And if you don't go to any of those things, that's fine. And I heard somewhere, somebody say recently, it may not have been that all of those things individually were bad. But what it may have been is their influence on us over a period of time causes us to lose our connectivity with the Lord. Now, I don't roller skate. You can ask Sister Wendy. It is a sight to see. I tried one time right after we got married. My body thought I was dying. I fell so many times it was in shock. It's not healthy for me to try it again. But yet we've taken youth groups there. And I'm just concerned. School's starting in a few days and God knows what our kids will see and hear and be involved with when that happens. And if I can encourage them somehow to not think of pastor as the old guy that don't ever want us to do anything. But think of, us, think of me as maybe somebody who's just trying to keep down the distractions a little bit longer in their life so that they can get a root planted with Jesus. And not only our young people, it would be good for some of us adults to get our root planted a little bit deeper again. And I've just been thinking about it. It really don't matter if the chairs are set up in a certain way on children's church side. It really don't matter if, thank you for changing that light bulb before church. That would have driven me crazy. But it really don't matter if every light's out in the sanctuary or not. Y'all th- know I'm crazy. But I come in on Sunday morning, and one of the first things I do when I get here is look up to make sure every ceiling fan and every ultra light's working. Because just because they were working on Saturday night don't mean they're still working on Sunday morning. And that bothers me, because I want it to be the best. If a visitor comes in, a neighbor comes in, a guest comes in, I want, they, they, they might think it's been out for months, and it hasn't. I just don't like that. But you know what? Can I confess to you, it really doesn't matter 
What does matter is when we get into this house, we get into his presence. What does matter is when I get into this place, I lift up hands before the holy God of heaven and say, Lord, the greatest thing I've ever done was falling in love with you when you washed my sins away. For some of us, I venture to say we haven't spent time with the Lord since this time last week. And we're getting ready to fix that because we're going to do it again right now. For some of you young people, we've had nine services in five days, not counting devotions. And they were long services too. And you'll get up tomorrow and go back and do whatever you want to do or whatever's on your agenda. But I can assure you of one thing. If you'll get up a little bit earlier and spend some time with the Lord, it'll make your Monday a whole lot better than what it's going to be without the Lord. We got to be holy. We got to be holy. We got to be holy. Stand with me across this building this morning. Father, if there's one thing in my life I won't, Lord, I want to encourage folks to fall in love with Jesus. God, if there's one thing in my life I desire, Lord, is to draw people a little bit closer to Calvary as they follow after you. Lord, and I realize today we're not swinging from the chandeliers. God, many of these young people are wore slap out in church this week. God, some of our staff are wore out, God, just long days and short nights. But God, I wouldn't trade anything that we have failed and experienced this week for a good night's of rest because God, being in your presence has been worth it all. But, Lord, it wasn't just for youth camp. It wasn't just for young people. God, your presence is available for anyone who desires to fall in love with you. Hallelujah this morning, God. And I just pray that the sweet anointing of the Holy Ghost, God, will move over this sanctuary and arrest us. God, what about that young person that's not committed to you? Deal with their heart this morning. What about that young adult, God, that's living in sin and they know they're living in sin? God, deal with their heart this morning and let them respond to that convicting power. God, those that have claimed to have you and accepted you and your son as the Lord of their life, God, let us spend that time in your presence this morning. Because it's in your presence where we find strength. It is in your presence where we find direction. It is in your presence where we're endued with power. Lord, and help us fall in love with being in the presence of the Holy One again. Move across this place, I pray. I'm going to invite you to meet me in these altars. You can stand, you can kneel, whatever's good for you this morning. But I want us just to spend some time in the presence of the Lord, telling Him how good He has been and how, telling Him how, how, how we desire to be full of His presence. Would you come help me this morning? Let's call upon the name of the Lord. Sing, guys. Lord, we love you today, Jesus. We love you today, Jesus. Hallelujah. Falling in love with Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, church. Falling in love. Come on, church. With Jesus, I'm falling in love with Jesus, was the best thing I ever, ever done.
was the best thing I've ever, ever done. Falling in love with Jesus. Falling in love with Jesus. Falling in love with Jesus was the best thing I ever Done. In your arms I feel protected. In your arms never disconnected. In your arms I feel protected. There's no place I'd rather, rather be. Let us lift our hands and sing it, falling in love, falling in love with Jesus, falling in love with Jesus, falling in love with Jesus was the best thing I've ever, ever done. Thank you for your presence this morning. Thank you for those, God, that have responded around the altars, God, that you've dealt with today. Thank you for moving across the sanctuary and touching hearts and lives today. Thank you, Lord, for reminding us, Lord, time spent with you is never a wasted time, God. It's important that we spend time in your presence, God, as we seek to be holy for you are holy. Move in our hearts this afternoon. Strengthen us on the journey, God. Give us favor with those, God, that we come in contact with, that we can do great things for the kingdom of God. Lord, bring us back tonight at the appointed time for prayer and for worship. Be with our young people as they share from their hearts tonight. Lord, we will forever give you the praise and the honor and the glory for it. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And the church said amen. There's still some in the altar wanting to get what they need from the Lord. Fellowship with those around you. Let our guests know how delighted you are to have them with us. If, you've, if you've been visiting with us, come back and be with us. Home folks, if you see somebody you haven't seen in a while, make sure you stop by and tell them you've enjoyed having them in the house of the Lord.